I didn't want to make this video, but two weeks ago, my buddy Quilby and I released Chunk Lock, a brand new way to play Minecraft, and it's starting to take off. As the creator of Chunk Lock, I just had to make this video. Problem is, I don't play survival Minecraft. My goal for this video is to beat a Bastion, the Dragon, and the Wither all in hardcore Minecraft in one, 100 days? Yeah, there's no way. Day one, and I started out with no trees in my chunk, which is the first thing you're supposed to mine when you start Minecraft. So I grabbed a little bit of dirt and unlocked the only two chunks that I could. Turns out this didn't help at all because I still needed wood to get into the next few chunks. We did get access to some kelp, which allowed us to unlock another two chunks, and I figured uh, things are starting to turn... Maybe I'll just drown myself. Unless I can get another star. Spoiler! In a moment of desperation, I figured, nah, I'll dig down and maybe find a mine shaft. Problem is, I have the attention span of a terrier, so I gave up in about 30 seconds. I realized I could get out of this situation with a little bit of salmon, but the problem is we were in an ocean which spawns no salmon, and I couldn't make a fishing rod. So I took my frustration out on the cod and ate their cold, uncooked corpses for dinner. Mmm, sushi. Night fell, and I basically stood around like an idiot, having no idea what to do. Day two and I realized we had unlocked a singular river biome, so actually we might be able to get salmon. So I tried to make a spawning platform, I don't know, is that what you're supposed to do? And now I just stand here for hours? Is this content? Day three and my mental health was deteriorating, which isn't that different from normal. And I stood there in the rain, uh, basically ready to quit this video. I was going to, I was actually going to quit this video. And then somehow, some way, the salmon spawned. And then I guess I was good. I accept I wasn't good because they stayed inside of locked chunks and they didn't want to come into the unlocked chunks. And so I wish they never really spawned at all. Fortunately, I practiced punching Khan to death for the last hour. And as it turns out, punching salmon to death is basically the same thing. Loving this, guys. 100 days videos. Yeah, 100 days. Having salmon actually did change a lot for us, and we started to make our way into the ocean, which wasn't the direction I wanted to go, but it was the only direction we could go. Ran into this guy who really wanted to hang out with us, which was kind of cringe, so I shoved him into my hole of sadness and I decided to name him Brian. Day four and off in the distance, I noticed a sunken ship and we are definitely going to get there at some point. I unlocked a few chunks, punched some salmon to death and wandered aimlessly alone. But at least I was a chunk novice. Day five and I was so close to land, but I was blocked by sandstone. Turns out you can use sand to make sandstone. I thought you needed a pickaxe, what? On the way to unlocking that chunk, I nearly drowned and I was at half a heart with no food. <laughs> Though on the bright side, if I died, I wouldn't have to make this video. Nah, I'm definitely gonna make it 100 days. Especially considering the fact that we were one chunk away from our first tree and it was just a dirt. So yeah, after five days in the water, we were finally on land, could make tools and play Minecraft. That night, we ate our first cooked meal while phantoms screamed at us overhead. And you know what? I couldn't be happier. Day six and I felt unstoppable. I expanded my base camp's little chunk boundaries, I planted a couple of seeds, and I actually got to cut down some trees, which was kind of a weird feeling, like I almost shouldn't be doing it. Apparently our base camp is next to a lava pit, so nether speedrun anybody? Made a hole, found some iron, it was a good day. Day seven and I made a staircase down to the mines to conserve food. I found a little bit of iron, enough to make a full suit of iron armor. <laughs> Aren't you guys glad that you voted for these? You voted for the, the most people voted for these things. Day eight, and I found a couple of chickens in the woods, but if you guys think I'm gonna name these things just cause they're the first animals I found, I do not name chickens, that's where I draw the line. Oh, but I found a cute little sheep. I'm gonna name you Bob, like Bob. Problem is I didn't have any wheat, so I ran home to get some, and by the time I got back, Bob was gone. I wasn't going to rest until I found Bob. Literally, I couldn't make a bed without his wool. Fortunately, I found him in a locked chunk, brought him home, and just like my good friend Brian, I stuck him in a hole. You know, I wonder how Brian's doing. I'm sure he's fine. Day nine, and I was churning chunks like a blender with an identity crisis. Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't actually make any sense. I could finally rest easy because Bob gave me two more pieces of wool for a bed. And just like every bed needs a home, every mob vote needs a clear, 
worst choice that you all somehow voted for. So I woke up in the morning to this alarm clock, which was apparently a dolphin trying to unlock a chunk. I didn't know they could do that. And then he actually unlocked a chunk, which I didn't know was possible. So I guess now I'm going to have one fewer chunk for the rest of this playthrough. I put the finishing touches on the house and on day 10, I was finally able to sleep. On day 11, I decided to see how Brian was doing. Brian was dead. I should have covered the hole. Basically, it threw off my whole day. Day 12, and we were gonna go for that sunken ship. So I loaded up a chest boat and promptly lost it in a locked uh, chunk. Crap. So I spent the rest of the day looking for an ink sack to get the black dye to get my chest boat back. And into the evening and the night, I was unlocking chunks like a treasure hunter in a chocolate factory. Doesn't make any sense. Ran into a chunk that cost uh, five saddles and uh, salmon everywhere, so I started fishing. I fished all day, and it was kind of relaxing, a lot more relaxing than punching salmon to death. Then I was nearly killed by lightning, which made me feel more alive than I'd ever felt in my life. I traded in the salmon, and guess what? Five, five more sam- five more of them. Five. Yeah. So I fished through the night, and before I knew it, I was at the boat. And I had the warmest welcome, kind of like how lava um, warmed Pompeii. Day 14, and the welcoming party just kept coming. And not only that, I couldn't get into any of the chests without, you guessed it, more salmon. Okay, but this is honestly insane. While I was fishing for salmon, I got the craziest book I've ever fished. It was Mending Efficiency 4, what? Day 15 and I was finally able to get into those chests and the loot wasn't half bad. What I was most excited for was the map, which you better bet your butts we are going to find this treasure. Day 16 and I figured the nether might be a way to get to our buried treasure, but I'm so bad at Minecraft that making a portal nearly killed me. And I think somehow I made the portal the wrong size? There was a point when I realized this was a massive mistake. Let's see if you can figure out when that happened. It wasn't when I realized I spawned in a crimson biome, or the fact that I didn't have a single piece of gold armor, or when I tried to catch a piglin with a fishing rod. This, this right here is actually the moment. Okay, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Fortunately, I escaped through the nether portal. Unfortunately, they uh, also came with me, and I nearly died again. How am I going to make it to 100 days? Day 17, and it was pretty clear I was never going back to the nether. Except that I totally go back to the nether in five days. But at this point, I was in complete denial, and I thought to myself, how far could this treasure possibly be? Very far. Uh, the answer is uncomfortably far. On the bright side, I found a dog, and I had bones, so we became best friends immediately, and I named him Henry. On day 18, I found Henry's brother, who I also promptly became best friends with. You can have multiple best friends, don't let people tell you otherwise, and I named him Porkchop. You remember that attention span problem I mentioned on day one? Well, that came back full force on day 18, and for that matter, every single day of my life. I brought Porkchop and Henry home, and they made themselves extremely comfortable, and apparently I decided to go mining. Why? I'm supposed to find the treasure. Where am I going? Day 19 and oh yeah, that's right. I am going back to the nether, but first I needed to get some diamonds. And boy, would you have it, luck was on my side because look at that. There's one. <laughs> one of them. Just <laughs> one. <laughs> Stupid. I found this mega cave underground that reminded me just how beautiful and cool Chunk Lock can be. Day 20, and I remember just how cool and beautiful I could be, so watch me jump off this really high rock. Whee! Found another massive diamond deposit of just one. Just one more. And then I found exactly one more diamond in the ceiling. Is it common to find veins of just one diamond or am I the unluckiest person alive? So a whole day, I got three. I guess that's enough for a pickaxe, which I promptly made on day 21. And then I enchanted it with that ridiculous mending book that we found while fishing. I made a gold helmet to prove to you guys that people can change, though it takes me nearly dying to do that. Day 22, and I decided to resume, you know, that whole treasure arc thing I had going on. Found out that treasure maps don't uh, work in the nether, which, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But I did have a general idea of where to go, and this pick made quick work of the netherrack. I basically went as far as I could until I hit nether brick, which I didn't have. I made a portal, and I went through to the other side. And at this point, we were only a couple of chunks away from the treasure. Day 23, and it didn't take long to get to the treasure chunk, and boy, were, uh, were my hopes high. I mean, it could be anything. It could be like a silver play button, you know, if you subscribe to the channel. You know what I mean. And this was it, guys. 
guys, 23 Minecraft days led up to this moment where, um, no diamonds, no, okay. I mean, is this an, is this good? I'm going home. Yep. Day 24, and I decided I should probably clean up my mess and maybe start the foundation for a proper home. Day 25, and I built a little path up as well as I started working on a little bit bigger of a house for myself. Day 26, and I realized I had no idea how to build uh, anything in this game. Day 27, and I was putting the finishing touches on the roof. Oh, that is bad. I have no idea what I am doing. Day 28, and it's no application to Hermitcraft, but hey, B-dubs, if you're watching, what do you think? It's bad. I also got a couple of free leads, and at the end of the day, I moved into the new house. Day 29, and I had a couple of friends visit, actually, though they weren't very nice. Fortunately, I won't be around villagers anytime soon. Made a fence for the chickens that I still refuse to name. Bob, you are gonna love your new home. Officially named my old house the Dog House, which is where I'll go if Bob ever gets upset with me. I decided to name our little town here Chunkshire, and I hung up our completed treasure map just to remind myself of how amazing I am. Day 30, and I hadn't nearly died enough yet, so I figured you guys might want to see a little bit more of that. I unlocked some nether chunks, dug some nether holes, and found some nether buildings. It was a day in the nether, and somehow I didn't die. See, I told you people can change. Day 31, and I decided to keep the party going, and check it out! Diamonds! Why did I even bother going on a treasure hunt? Killed some blazes, which was pretty easy, especially since I'm good at Minecraft now, and then I stole their spine, or what- is this the part that spins around? What even is a blaze rod? Day 32, and after making a brewing stand, I realized my deep slate supply was more plentiful than my social life, so I decided to make my nether portal a bit more menacing. Day 33, and I went back into the nether, killed a bunch of blazes, actually killed four blazes at one time because I'm amazing at Minecraft now. I even killed a ghast with a piece of bread. Have you ever done that? Yes! Bread! Yes! Stumbled across that nether building that has all those murder pigs in it, and let's just say we'll be back here in 17 days, but today is not the day. Day 34, and I was feeling pretty inspired, so I headed down to the mines and grabbed a whole bunch of granite in that other block that looks a lot like stone, but it's not stone, and I forget what it's called. Day 35, and I had to clear the area for the build, so I cut down a whole bunch of trees. Day 36, and I had all the materials I needed for this build. You see, with Chunkshire being right on the water and having a sunken ship not like 50 yards off the coast, I figured we should warn future ships of the dangers of the chunks by building a lighthouse. Day 38, and I made an enchanting table, plonked that right in the center of our lighthouse, and while I was making a path, I realized we had unlocked so many chunks that the sun was actually peeking through for the first time. We also made a diamond sword and enchanted it. Day 39, and I was itching for a near-death experience, so I went back into the nether. And boy, did I find one. Oh, boy, oh boy. Okay, big pig. Oh, mama. Oh, mama pig. And the baby. The baby's coming. So maybe I'm bad at Minecraft again. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I almost died. Day 40, and I decided to make a nether portal on top of the bastion, and wouldn't you know it, I found a village. I made my way up the hill, and I made it to the village by nightfall, where I nearly died to a creeper explosion. Useless iron golem. Seriously. Day 41, and I started grabbing hostages. A uh, uh, willing relocation participants. I'd never moved villagers before, but I figured how hard could it be to get them through a crimson forest and nether fortress by boat? Unrelated, but I got a wither skull. Sick. But back to the action. This was it. A near flawless execution of villager transportation, though I made the mistake of getting out of the boat, and then a pig got into the boat, so then I had to break the boat, which meant the villager was free to wander through the nether fortress, to which he was promptly murdered by a blaze. Just saying, this is also why I don't name chickens. Day 42, and I let the other villager know that everything went perfectly. But I don't think he believed me, because when we got to Chunkshire, he ran in the opposite direction directly into a locked chunk. Oh, so this is why people hate moving villagers. I then made a very odd-looking statue for no particular reason. Day 43, and I figured, how hard could it be to get one more villager? So I found this guy named Clark shouldn't have named him, because everything that could go wrong went wrong with Clark. On the nether side, Clark wandered deep into locked chunks, and I contemplated just letting him die out there, but I named him. And now that I named him, I had to save him. Day 44 was an all-out rescue mission for Clark, and Clark didn't make it easy. You see, as time went on, he was wandering deeper into the Soul Sand Valley, and just as I was about to give up, his dumb villager brain walked right into my boat, just 
fell right in. <laughs> yep. Oh, Clark, you're just gonna love Chunkshire. I will never move villagers again. Day 45, and I spent the next couple of days building a greenhouse for Clark and unnamed villager number one to move into. And Clark was happy as a cucumber. And on day 48, Clark and unnamed villager number one had a baby, unnamed villager number three. And now that I have villagers, I spend the next 50 days doing absolutely nothing with them. Just watch. Day 49, and my gear was looking pretty rough, so I went mining for some iron and coal, and I nearly drowned while doing it. I am drowning, drowning in an aquifer. I am drowning. Day 50, and you remember 17 days ago how I said I'd go back to the bastion? Well, I go, I go, I go back to the bastion. And honestly, I don't know what all the fuss is about. I mean, sure, there are lots of murder pigs. Big pigs, mad pigs, axe pigs, bunch of pigs. Nothing a little lava can't solve. Once I was at the bottom of the bastion, I grabbed up all the gold and found yet another chest that put our treasure hunt to shame. Day 51, Bastion Part 2, the electric- Nope, 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 not gonna say it. I promised myself I wouldn't say it. Boogaloo. I went in a little overconfident this time because a piglin brute practically knocked me off the edge to my death, so I ran like a little wuss and hid in a little hole. I found a little pig arguing with a big pig, and normally I stay out of these kind of things, but I just wanted to help the guy out, so I pat him on the back and let him know everything was gonna be okay. Back to the bastion, and the loot on this side was, nah, okay, and so after running into a three creeper head chunk, I decided I was done with the bastion. Day 52, and I decided Chunkshire could use a little bit of terraforming, so I started working on a rock wall that went all the way along the side. That was until the lava lake caught my forest on fire. 100 days, gonna go another 50 in survival. Love survival. Day 53, and this mini cliff felt like an OSHA violation, so I gave it a handrail. Didn't really like it, but at this point I had to commit to the bit, so I tried out an oak fence and... Eh. Day 54, and if we were going to take on the dragon next, I felt like I should really get a max enchanting setup. So I made two eyes of ender, headed back to the village, and got a general sense of the direction I needed to go. Almost died again in, you guessed it, the nether, but I figured I could use the nether to get a little closer to the stronghold. Here goes nothing. And I spawned in a cave. Day 55, and I made my way to the surface where I started unlocking chunks until I could throw another eye of ender. And it broke. The two Eye of Enders I, I had are now gone. I figured we had a rough direction of where to go and we could always find more eyes along the way. Day 56 was just a lot of unlocking chunks as I made my way down the mountain into a swamp where for the first time I had access to cows and sugarcane. Day 57 and I trapped a bunch of pigs in a hole and threw gold at them until they gave me as many ender pearls as I wanted, though they actually barely gave me any ender pearls at all. Day 58 and it turns out I was wandering in the right direction, so I unlocked a bunch more chunks and then slept in the swamp for the night. Day 59, and it turns out I was wandering in the wrong direction, so I unlocked a bunch more chunks in another direction. I spent that night on top of a cliff, and if I knew I would have been gone this long, I probably would have packed extra socks. Day 60, and I lost my Eye of Ender somewhere in a locked chunk, so I traveled down the cliff to try to find it. At this point, I was greeted by the most number of skeletons I had ever seen, like an unnecessary number of skeletons. Fortunately, the llama next to me was taking shots and providing alternative fire. They killed the llama, so I had to fight them myself, and before I knew it, they had broken my shield and I was one shot away from death. Somehow, I'm supposed to beat a dragon and a wither. Somehow. I got revenge for the llama, found my Eye of Ender, and realized I needed granite in order to keep going. So I started digging away into the cliffside, and I found a lot of stone and coal, but no granite. And then I found even more stone, like it's somehow been arranged into a bunch of bricks, and okay, that's a stupid joke. I found the stronghold. Better yet, the library, where I found some pretty good enchanted books and armor trim, and I grabbed an obnoxious number of unenchanted books. There's no way I actually need this many. Day 61, and I brought everything home, made a bunch of bookshelves, placed placed a bunch of bookshelves, enchanted up my gear, and we were still nowhere near ready to fight the dragon. Day 62, and yes, I did spend the whole day trying to find Bob a sheep friend, and then building Bob and his sheep friend a new home. Day 63, and I decided to automate our food production by making a chicken farm. Problem is, I followed a bedrock tutorial, but didn't realize this until after it was done. Then the chicken farm set my barn on fire, and then set me on fire. We are not talking about day 63. It didn't happen. Day 64, and I decided to continue my wall along the opposite side, and don't worry, I put up my OSHA safe fencing just so I could continue to beat this very, very unfunny joke even further to death. Day 65, and continuing our search for the stronghold, I figured I might be able to use the nether to hop over a few more chunks. It wasn't the smartest or safest idea, but sometimes you have to dumb your way through a problem and see where you end up on the other side. And in this case, we dumbed ourselves right through this problem. Day 66, and after exploring a few chunks on the surface, I figured I might as well 
well just dig down and see if I can find the stronghold. Sure enough, we did, and before we knew it, we found the portal room. Unfortunately, it was locked by lily pads. So on day 67, I headed back to the swamp and collected a buttload of lily pads. That's an actual unit of measure. Back at the portal room, we paid our debts and discovered that we had nowhere near the number of eyes needed to get to the end. Those piglins are gonna pay. Day 68, and since I didn't have any gold, I couldn't trade with piglins, so instead I had to try to find a warped forest so that I could kill endermen for their ender pearls. I don't like the nether. I hate blazes. I am not having a good time. Day funny number, and continuing in the spirit of not having a good time and nearly dying, I decided to bridge myself over a pit of lava. If I make this jump, you guys have to like the video. Okay, you have to like the video. Day 70, and we emerged from our hole to find the beginnings of a warped forest. Murdered a couple of endermen in cold blood. Oh, there's something I love about that sound. Day 71, and we murdered a lot more endermen in cold blood until we had enough of their eyes to go home. That is disturbing. Very, very messed up. Day 72, and my ADHD was in full swing, so I decided to completely pivot, start working on a mega build, and I went down into the mines to grab a buttload of andesite. Again, that is a unit of measure. Day 73 was another resource collection day, so I went out and grabbed a, a, butt, a, load, a buttload of oak. I'm not very creative. Day 74, and here are all the resources we gathered. Now it was time to start on our biggest build to date. So this build is from another 100 days series I did nearly a year ago, but we are not going to talk about that series because those videos completely flopped. I had no idea what I was doing and they are almost unwatchable. Now that being said, I'm actually a little bit proud of this build because it's quite pretty. Actually, it's really good. Day 79, and every build has to have some kind of purpose, I decided to turn this one into my brewing lab. But I've never actually done potion making before, so when trying to make strength potions, I accidentally made mundane potions, which then had to be completely thrown away. Don't worry, I eventually figured it out, and yes, I am stocking up for the Ender Dragon fight. Day 80, and it was time to kill the purple lizard in the space dimension, but first I said goodbye to my dogs, who I hadn't even acknowledged in 60 days. I'm a terrible dog parent. The sacrifices you make when you're an awesome human being. All right, anyways, space lizard. Now I wish I could tell you guys that this was some kind of nail biting fight where I barely escaped with my life, but in reality, I just unlocked a bunch of chunks, dodged some fireballs that made the Enderman mad, decided it was my turn to make the Enderman mad, killed the Enderman. I blew up all the Healy bits, which I guess were kind of annoying because I had to pillar up at one point, but I had a slow falling potion and when they were all gone, it was now time to take on the dragon. I mean, this was basically it. I don't know what else to say. At the end, I just punched her in the face and she died. That's... That's the whole boss, that's the whole thing. Maybe the wither's gonna be harder. Yeah. Day 81 and yet another OSHA violation. That building's gonna fall into the ocean, but I need a little more tough. So I went deep slate mining, found a bit of tough, found a bit of diamonds, and now I have enough diamonds to make a full suit of diamond armor. Day 82 and we emerged from our hole with a whole bunch of riches, enough to make some shiny clothes, and I enchanted them to make them even shinier. I'm glowing. I'm beautiful. Day 83 and OSHA was practically knocking at my door. So I hurried and finished up the wall as quickly as I could. And no, I will not give up this joke until it's funny. I'm going to continue to use this joke until somebody down in the comments says this is the funniest joke they have ever heard. But what isn't a funny joke is actually how pretty this town is starting to look. I, I really like it. Day 84 and it was clear I was out of ideas because I started to build roads. And anybody knows when a YouTuber starts to build roads, they are clearly looking for filler content. Don't even get me started on benches and bushes. We spend almost the whole day 85 just placing bushes. Day 85 and all we did was place bushes. If this is a surprise to you, then you clearly didn't listen to day 84. I lied a little bit. We made an area for our suspicious looking statue and we have a chicken population problem. Poor things, not a single one has a name. Day 86 and I needed to repair my pick so I headed to the end and started killing Endermen. Problem is I made the least safe Enderman safe hideout in the world because apparently when you place dirt blocks Endermen will just pick them up and so before I knew it the sides were closing in on me and my death was imminent. It was the, one of the scariest moments in this entire playthrough. And at this point the video is getting made if I die or not so I'd be pretty mad if I died. Day 87 and since we're fighting the Wither in 10 days I figured I'd try to find an end city to see if I could upgrade my gear. Not gonna lie, bridging over the void, bit of a butt clencher. 
but I did manage to find an end gateway, so it wasn't all bad. Day 88, and we did a bit more killing, a bit more clenching, a little more unlocking, and before we knew it, we were at an end city with a boat. Pillared on up, killed the purple trash can guard, sifted through some junk, and then I put on my first pair of wings. Day 88 was pretty cool, not gonna lie, but I wasn't ready for the coolness to end. I headed into the end city, and this is when things started to not go so great. I was in the Willy Wonka Tower of Death when the shulkers just started to get completely out of hand, and I was running out of health. Backed into a corner, I managed to wall myself off, and I vowed to never, ever come back here again. On the bright side, at the top of the murder tower, there was a sweet sword and two pickaxes waiting for me. Day 89, and after eating a chorus fruit, I was sent all the way back down to the bottom. I took this as a sign that maybe I should go home. After all, I really, I don't like this place. I don't like the end. I got home and made a bunch of OP tools, and then put the dragon egg, I don't know, wherever in my room, and the dragon Dragon head too. This honestly, this room is pretty sad looking. <laughs> Day 90, and this random statue was looking a little incomplete, so I decided to go find some more skeleton heads. Problem is, the skeleton heads didn't want to be found. I think it's because I didn't have looting on my sword, but I don't know. I killed these guys forever until I finally found a head, and funny enough, immediately after that, I found the second one. Not sure how this guy got in here, but I won't think about it too much. And let's see, the head could go right here. That's that looks good, yeah? What do you guys think? Day 91, and I'll come clean, guys. I know how to summon a wither, and we're not gonna do it here. The only place where there's enough room is, you guessed it, the space dimension. Now, I've never actually fought the wither before, but my gut told me to build a bunch of World War I-style bunkers, so here I am building World War I-style bunkers. Day 92, and I decided to put my bunkers to test, and yeah, these things are bunking perfectly. Day 93, and I decided to stick around to get some enchanting levels, but also listen to the sound of dying Enderman, because it's like like ASMR for my soul. Day 94 and I enchanted my bow. This is why I didn't name them. Combined my bows into a pretty good one and made a bunch of golden apples. Day 95 and it was time. I left a sign to let people know that I was here in case I never came back. I said goodbye to Chunkshire and headed to the end. This was it, the moment you were all waiting for. Can Avid beat the Wither? Well, I hate to break it to you, but uh, I forgot something and uh, I had to go get it. I promise you I'm not stalling. I wanted a little bit of milk and some speed potions, so I, you're going to have to forgive me if I broke the momentum of this video, but this is what I did. So just, you know, figure it, figure it, you're going to be fine with it. Day 96 and I was done stalling. I had a full belly. I went to the bathroom. It was wither time. I drank a swiftness potion and I was instantly thankful that I took a day to grab those. And my strategy was simple. Shoot, run away, shoot, run away away and use the swiftness potion to stay a couple steps ahead of the wither. Eventually the potion wore off and I'll be honest the bunkers worked perfectly. I was I kind of made these as a joke but they're they're great. You should use these. There was one point where I was like oh no I'm withered. I'll just drink some milk. I might as well get to a bunker and drink some more milk because the most damage that I took this whole fight was like three hearts. I shot him in the face and he went into melee mode where I just started spiraling around him and whacking him like he was some kind of Dark Souls boss. Guys I mean I don't mean to make light of this boss. It's just that maybe if you come prepared, it's not that hard. So yeah, that was the fight. And now I have a chunk with this Nether Star's name on it. Day 97. And what the heck are you supposed to do with the last three days of a 100 days playthrough? I went to the Nether, grabbed some shroom lights and replaced all of my torch spam with a little bit nicer of a lighting. It looks, it looks fine. Day 98, and I wanted to find a way to apologize to Clark for nearly leaving him to die in a soul sand valley, so I decided to make my potion room his brand new house, and Clark went inside, immediately became the potion master we found him as, and he, he told me he really liked it, actually. He said that. That's... That's what he said. Day 99, and I decided to see how many chunks I could unlock in a single day. The answer was 20. It's not, not a lot actually. Finally, against all odds, we'd reached day 100. But before destroying the Nether Star, I figured it was time to officially give Bob a name. Except I, I forgot which one was Bob. Um, so you're, you, yep, you're the one. You look just, just like him. Look just like him. That's him. Mm -hmm. I also made a couple of rockets, and for the first time, we could see our beautiful town of Chunkshire from the air. And I felt like a proud little papa. I love this town. I took a boat out to where our journey first began, and in any normal, ordinary Minecraft playthrough, you would have made a beacon. But ladies and gentlemen, this is Chunklock.
Nothing is ordinary. Day 101 and guys, I couldn't be happier. I'm tired. These 100 day videos are massive projects and any content creator who takes them on, good luck to you, holy cow. But seriously, if you like this video, leave a like, subscribe, let me know down in the comments and I really genuinely hope I never have to make another one of these. So don't like it that much, but I hope you like it enough to at least have stuck around to the end of the video. And okay, goodbye everybody. Bye forever. I'll never see you in this series again. See ya.